Islam is the second largest religion in the world next to Christianity, and by some estimates, the fastest growing religion. Sikhism is one of the youngest of the major world religions and the world's fifth largest organized religion. Although often confused, Sikhism is a distinct religion separate from Hinduism and Islam. So now let's look at some of the differences between Sikhism and Islam to learn the distinct practices and beliefs that they have. Hey everyone, my name is Leroy Kenton and thanks for coming back to another episode of FTD Facts. Now there's a lot that I want to explore in this video and this video is really going to be helpful to you that want to know and see the differences of Sikhism and Islam just so you can kind of get an idea of how exactly are they distinct and what sort of similarities are there between them. Now before I jump into all of that, I have two updates for you for all of you Spanish speakers out there. I know there's not many of you that watch FTD Facts. However, we have a new channel called FTD Facts Español where our videos are being translated into Spanish. So if you speak Spanish and you want to keep on learning in your mother tongue or you just love hearing the Spanish language, subscribe to FTD Facts Español. And the second update I have for you is my personal channel that I started. It's called FTD Speaks. And you really want to subscribe to that channel because we're going to be exploring topics about, you know, uh, religion, spirituality, mindset, entrepreneurship, as well as I'll be sharing my own experiences inside of these topics. So it's gonna be real, it's gonna be completely different from FTD Facts. So I'll have a link to FTD Speaks down below and I'm looking forward to seeing every single one of you over there. Okay, so I've done enough talking, let's jump into this episode. Okay, first off, let's take a look at the meanings of Sikhism and Islam. So the root word of Sikhism is obviously Sikh and that word means student in Persian Punjabi. Sikhs are also often referred to as disciples or learners. Learners. Now, Islam, Islam is an Arabic word for submission or surrender in ultimate peace. And the word Muslim, which is a follower of Islam, means a believer in one God, Allah. So now let's take a closer look into these religions, you know, where they originated from and just like give you a general overview of what these religions are exactly about. And again, this is generally speaking, I know there's different branches and offshoots that have varying beliefs, but what I'm going to be sharing with you is the most general belief of these religions. Starting off with Islam, Islam is a monotheistic religion and it was really brought to public like as an organized religion through the Prophet Muhammad in the Arabian Peninsula in Mecca and this is during the 7th century CE. According to the Islamic scripture, all people who follow God's revealed guidance and the messengers sent with it submit to that guidance and are considered to be Muslims. Now Islam's roots can be traced back to about 2000 years BCE in the Middle East to Ishmael who was one of the sons of the Prophet Abraham. Now in the Quran, Ishmael and his father Abraham built the Kaaba of Mecca. And if you don't know, the Kaaba is a building in the center of the great mosque of Mecca. So after the Kaaba had fell into the hands of pagans over time in 630 CE, the Prophet Muhammad re-established leadership in Mecca and rededicated the Kaaba to the worship of Allah. Now let's take a look at Sikhism. So Sikhism is a much younger religion based on the world standards when it comes to being organized as a religion. But it really originated as a religion with the birth of Guru Nanak in Punjab around the year 1469 CE. And it's based on the Guru's writings as well as the teachings of 10 successive Sikh Gurus, the last one being the sacred text called Guru Granth Sahib. Guru Nanak's philosophy teaches that there is no Hindu and this means that all spirituality is 100% totally equal. So this philosophy was really propagated by Guru Nanak who was born into a Hindu family and his spiritual companion by the name of Bai Mardana was born of a Muslim family. And this philosophy was like really put together while they were doing a series of mission trips. So Guru Nanak, he compiled the writings of both Hindu and Muslim saints, which are included in Sikh scriptures. And Sikhism originated in the area of the Indian subcontinent that is now present day Pakistan. Sikhism has about 20 million followers worldwide. So this makes up 0.39% of the world's population, approximately 
83% live in India, and about 76% of all Sikhs live in the northern Indian state of Punjab. And there's smaller groups of Sikhs that are dispersed in various parts around the world. Now, there's a lot more Muslims in the world, so based on a percentage of the total population of the religion, it makes up about 24% of the world's global population. And when we look at certain regions in the world, 24.8% of Asia and Oceania identify as Muslims, 91.2% are in the Middle East and North Africa, 29.6% are in Sub-Saharan Africa, around 6% of Europe is Muslim, and 0.6% in the Americas. Now I'm going to get into the differences between the Sikh view of God and the Muslim view of God. Now both of these religions are considered to be monotheistic religions where they believe in one God. However, the way in which they believe God is much different from each other. Inside of Sikhism, Sikhs believe in Ik Ankar, one creator, one supreme reality who is in all creation. And Sikhs refer to God as Wahiguru, and God has no form no gender. Ik Ankar is not a highly personal god, but rather a formless force that underlies all creation. Now the Islamic view of God is a more of a personal god. So God is the one true creator. God has always existed, none existed before him, and God will exist forever. He transcends life and death, and no creation resembles God at all, and God cannot be seen, yet God sees everything. Now, the goal of the religions are also a bit different, but fundamentally they're the same. So Sikhism seeks to merge with and have the greatest relationship with God as possible. To love and obey God unconditionally, and the way to meet God is to become God-like, meaning that you instill God-like virtues within you. For Islam, the general goal is to fulfill your responsibility of this life through following the Holy Quran and the Hadith, serving humanity, and submitting to the will of God. Now, in terms of achieving salvation in Sikhism, to do that, you need to worship God, you gotta do good deeds in the name of God, as well as perform service for your community. You must also fight the five evil sins which are known as greed, ego, attachment, anger, and lust. And in this process, you're meditating, you're praying to improve your relationship with God, and of course, God will forgive you and save you. The means to salvation in Islam is belief in one God, remembrance of God, and then repenting of your sins, of course, praying and trusting in God that he will have mercy on you. Now, when it comes to the differences in the beliefs of life and death, it is completely different. So Sikhism is a constant cycle of reincarnation, so similar to to Hinduism until you achieve enlightenment. Sikhs believe that there are 8,400,000 forms of life and that many souls have to travel through a number of these before they can reach Waheguru. And the goal is to merge with God. Muslims have a much different belief and it's one that's more, you know, like this is it, this is your one shot to get things right. According to Islamic teachings, all beings are created with the ability to reason and make intelligent choices and be accountable to God. So when the day of judgment comes, you'll either be rewarded with eternal life for the good deeds that you do, or you're punished for the evil things that you did. When it comes to the different places of worship in these three religions, in Islam there's masjids, or in English we call them mosques, and they're the most common places of worship. There's also community centers, as well as Muslims are free to, you know, worship in any place that's considered clean by the standards in Islam. For Sikhs, they gather in Gudrara for congregational worship and anyone can enter into a Gudwara and you don't have to be a Sikh to enter it doesn't matter your your race or whatever you know you're free to go in and worship anytime now there's personal worship that can be done at any place at any time as well so you don't necessarily have to go to a Gudwara to worship now is there a difference between these religions in the use of statues and pictures well let's take a look so in Sikhism pictures of Sikh gurus are considered idolatry and they're not accepted from a religious perspective. Using images of God and prophets in Islam is not allowed at all. Now I want to explore the different titles and positions that people hold within the religion as well as the scriptures that they use. And I also want to dive more into some of the distinct religious practices. So when it comes to the clergy of the religions, Sikhism have the Granthi and they are people who are appointed as the one that take care of the Guru Granth Sahib, which is the last and final Guru in Sikhism. 
Sikhism and it's also the holy text that they use. Now the Granthi can be male or female but they must be part of the Sikh religion of course. Now there's no other clergy. Sikhs however do have a ragi who is somebody who sings or chants the Guru Granth Sahib. In Islam there's Imams who lead congregational prayers and mosques. There's also Sheikhs and those are Arab leaders and particularly the chief or the head of an Arab tribe, family or village. Islam has Mulanas and that title comes before names of respected Muslim religious leaders as well as Mullahs who are Muslims that are really learned in the Islamic theology and sacred law and there's muftis who are Muslim legal experts. In terms of the scriptures that are used, in Sikhism, the Sikh scripture again is the Guru Granth Sahib and these scriptures are revered because it serves as a spiritual guide for its followers. But it's not revered as being a divine revelation like the Quran. Sikhs believe that no religious tradition has a monopoly on what is considered absolute truth. In Islam, of course, their holy book is the Quran as well as they have traditions of the last prophet Muhammad called the Sunnah or Hadiths. The main practices that Sikhs follow are the three pillars or fundamental principles and that is meditation on God, honest earning by hard work, sharing resources and performing community service. That, that's like four but the last two are kind of grouped together. There's also five essential beliefs. The belief that there's one creator, that there's ten historical gurus. There's also the essential belief of the scripture the Guru Granth Sahib and the teachings of the ten gurus of course and the initiation rites of the 10th Guru. There's also five articles of faith that are seen through the bodies of those who are initiated into Sikhism and that is the unshaved hair that's covered by a turban, there's a wooden comb, steel bracelet, a ceremonial short sword, as well as a specially designed undergarment. In the religion of Islam there's the five pillars which are the testament that there is one God and Muhammad is his messenger. There's a prayer five times daily, fasting during Ramadan, charity to the poor, and the pilgrimage to Mecca that you must complete at least once in your life. Islam also has six articles of faith and beliefs. The only one deity, Allah, the belief in angels, the belief in the prophets, belief in the Quran as the scripture, the resurrection and the afterlife, as well as the belief in the destiny and fate carried out by the will of Allah. Now the last thing I want to look at is what are some of the holy days that these religions celebrate? In Sikhism they are a ton of holy days. Now there's the Guru Gobind Singh's birthday, there's the Magi which commemorates the martyrdom of the 40 followers of Guru Gobind Singh. There is Hola Mahola that's celebrated during the festival of Holi. There's the Vaisakhi which commemorates the martyrdom of the Guru Arjan. The celebration of the Guru Granth Sahib celebrated in August or September which commemorates the completion of the Sikh holy text in 1606. And there's Guru Nanak's birthday as well as the commemoration of the martyrdom of of Guru Tag Bahadur. Also in Sikhism, there's no one day of the week that is considered to be holier or special than others, although they do have all these other celebrations. In Islam, there's Ramadan, which is the month of fasting, there's Eid al Uda, which is the feast of sacrifice, and Eid al Fatir, which is the festival at the end of Ramadan. And generally speaking, Muslims go on Fridays to worship at the mosques. Now, one of the great things for me as I began to study, you know, Islam and Sikhism is that when you look at the core of these religions we see that fundamentally they compel their followers to live great lives in service to humanity and I hope this cleared up any confusion between the two religions thanks for coming here and learning with me my name is Leroy Kenton and I'll see you real soon in another video Hey everybody, if you want to continue learning more about Islam and Sikhism in more detail, here are two playlists where you can find all the videos about Islam and Sikhism as well as other religions and other topics that we talk about. Come back every single day for new videos and I'll see you real soon.